My first question is, can non-alcoholic fatty liver disease be reversed? Oh, what a timely question. What's called NAFLD, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Um, I will tell you as a personal uh, anecdote or little footnote that when I was a young doctor, there was no NAFLD. There was only alcoholic fatty liver disease. Now, my colleague, Dr. Richard Johnson, a brilliant scientist uh, and has a very readable book called The Fat Switch. And he points out that high fructose corn syrup that we find in many foods and beverages is a major, major inducer of this NAFLD or non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. In fact, if I remember correctly what he talked about in a lecture, if you have just one can of a standard Pepsi, Coke, Sprite, uh, Dr. Pepper, they're all uh, equivalent in this regard. They all have one or another form of high fructose corn syrup um, and many processed foods and packaged foods uh, and chipped and crisped foods uh, sometimes have uh, these um, uh, unhealthy uh, um, materials. Um, in his book, The Fat Switch, he points out that if you just have one can of diet soda or one can of sugared soda, but the high fructose corn syrups in both of them, you have a fatty liver for a week or two. If you have a can a day for a month, you'll have a fatty liver for six months to a year. And so we really have a very interesting epidemiologic phenomenon which means we can track directly with a three to five year gap, the introduction of high fructose corn syrup in the early 60s, its rapid rise because it was an agricultural waste, it was subsidized, it was cheaper than water, it was encouraged to be used because a very famous man, Fred Stair, uh, argued that fructose fooled the body. And you know Russ Jaffe would say, or I would say, uh, if you try to fool the body, uh, you're the fool. Uh, Fred Stair argued very compellingly that fructose bypassed insulin. It was not glucose. It was a, an isomer. It was very similar, but not identical to glucose. However, what he didn't mention, and maybe he didn't know, was that inside the cell it turns into glucose. So it's a stealth form of glucose, not a preferred form uh, in more than tiny amounts, the kind of tiny amounts you would get in whole foods. Um, so the essence of it is that NAFLD is a new syndrome. It's within one medical generation, if I'm a, a, an example. Um, uh, and uh, I will add as a, as a footnote, it's not just the high fructose corn syrup. It's taking those empty calories from that source. And then generally people are not properly nourished in terms of getting the essential required nutrients that their body cannot produce that they must take in from the outside. And if I remember correctly, it was Charlie Lieber who showed that with alcoholics, it was the fact that they got so drunk that they didn't eat that caused their fatty liver disease. It was a malnutrition disease. In fact, and this is a reported study, uh, in Newark, New Jersey, he went out and he put vitamins in vodka, gave it out to alcoholics, and showed that they had much less fatty liver disease if you just had the vitamins in with the booze. So there's alcoholic fatty liver disease, uh, then there's non-alcoholic, which is a new syndrome. It's becoming very common. And I am confident that Dr. Johnson and his colleagues are correct, that it is the product of high fructose corn syrup, uh, and that we should avoid it, uh, that we can and should avoid it, uh, in everything that we consume. 